Hello, and yep, this is another video on a pressure washer that won't build pressure. Backstory on this one is that fellow that bought this three or four years ago used it about three times the first year, everything worked fine. Used it the second year, everything worked fine. This past year, in the spring tank, of course, he parked it in there, didn't drain the gas out of the carburetor, didn't clear the water out of the pump or anything. And this past winter, he parked it in his garage and left it there. And the spring went out to use it. Motor wouldn't start. So he took it to the, um, to the dealership. I think it was the Lowe's. Had them rebuild the carburetor, clean it all out for 125 bucks. He was all happy, got the thing home, hooked his water up to it, turned it on. No pressure. Unusual. So I know you've seen all the other YouTube videos on people who have taken these things apart, and all of them are excellent. They give you really good information on how to do all that. Mine had one more layer of problem deeper than what they go into. Of course, everybody says, take it apart, take a look at these valves, take the little, those two, those things right there, those are the little plastic valves that fit down in here. There's three of them here, and there's three more that fit underneath these caps here. And you have to dig them out and then replace them, and they're inexpensive to replace. So all that was done. And then the unloader valve here, that's another source of problem that everybody goes into. Either replace it or you take yours out and you break it loose so that it works freely. And then voila, you plug it back up, hook your power up to it, hook your water to it, everybody works fine. Well, this one didn't do that. All that stuff was done and it still wouldn't build pressure. So Phil had had enough of it, he had sold it to me for 30 bucks. And I thought, well crap, for 30 bucks, the motor in it's worth that. So I brought it home, hooked it up, went through all the same pains and everything that he did, same results. And then I remembered one of the videos, one of the guys says, oh, what's underneath this little thing right here? Well, he took the top off and inside there, there's a little steel ball with a spring under it. Did oh, that's what's under there. Of course, his rolled out into his hand. Every, he said, oh, there's no problem there. He put it back in. No big deal. Well, I tried that. You can see the spring in there. You have a ball. That ball wouldn't come out, no matter what. So this is a little scriber with a uh, rare earth magnet on the end of it. Strong as crap. And that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to pull the ball and spring out. Mine didn't come out. So that was the source of my not being able to get pressure. I'm going to take this out and show you what I did to get this thing out. What do you do? Well, of course, first thing is try to squirt penetrating oil all down in there to loosen all that stuff up. That didn't work. So then I thought, well, that's weird. Nothing came loose. It should have just fallen right out. So the next thing I did, I took this thing and set it on the mill table here and got it level enough that I could take and squirt the vapor rust down in that hole and fill up all of the chambers of the valves and everything with vapor rust and let it sit overnight. Came out the next morning, drained the vapor rust out of it, and it still wouldn't come free. So I thought, well, crap. So then I took this whole valve body again in the kitchen, put it in the sink and ran hot water on it. I've got hot water, you just almost can't hold your hand under it, it's so hot to flush everything out of it, all the vapor rust and everything. And I kept thinking that I've got to get pressure behind that ball to push that thing out. So the solution was compressed air. Problem was if you squirt compressed air, the only place you can squirt compressed air in it to get anything on the inside is through the inlet valve right here. But if you shoot compressed air in there, it comes out everywhere. It comes out through these three, three ports. It comes out through these three ports. So you got to find a way to contain that. Well, these three are simple. You just squirt these things back on there. You leave the valves out and just put these things back in the top. But the problem was, how do you seal these things off? I'll show you what I did. I'm gonna put this camera down up here in this nice dirty little hole. I hope it doesn't fall. Okay. 
Looking around in all my scrap bins of useless material that I seem to save forever, I found a little piece of, I don't know, this is five sixteenths, maybe three eighths inch thick plastic. It's pliable. And I cut a circle. I don't know how big that is, but it's big enough to fit over that. And then I cut a piece of two by six, big enough to hold that. And then another piece of wood that I put on this side so I can squeeze that whole thing together. Now you got to be careful squeezing it because you see this right here, this is wider here than here and here and here. So it kind of goes in a curve like that. You have to press against these two surfaces here, this point and this point to parallel to that surface there. So put a piece of rubber over that. And this is kind of a pain in the butt to get in here and get set up right. But let me do it and I'll move the camera over here and show you exactly from the top view. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Looking straight down on it. You can see, oops, it's touching here, and it's touching here. And that's pushing this thing straight against the rubber, against that two by in the back of the vise. Okay. Now I tighten, let me put this back over here. These are 14 millimeters. So you tighten these guys back down. There no air will come through them. The three valves on the other side are sealed off by this piece of rubber across them. Now you take compressed air, shoot it through there. And that will create enough pressure. The problem is, though, that once that thing goes and you're using compressor in here, that ball and that spring will shoot off. And you probably got those invisible garage trolls in there that I've got. I've got a herd of them. Anything hits the floor, they wake up and they scurry out and get it and run behind something or under something. And it's never seen or heard from again. So what I did is I took this thing, and it's just big enough to go down in that hole and magnetically attach itself to that ball. Now if I shoot air in here, this thing's gonna jump about a foot, foot and a half up in the air. So, like that. And when, it took several tries, but when that thing finally gave, this thing came out, and luckily the ball was stuck to the end of it. So then my next problem was to retrieve the spring. And when I pulled this thing out of the vise, the spring was not there. So the spring had come out with it and did not stick to the ball. As luck would have it, and this may be one of maybe three times in my entire life, and I'm 70 years old, that something hit the floor and I actually found it. I found that spring. And I took these things out and I soaked them in WD-40 and I buffed them and I cleaned them and I cleaned the bottom of that port out and put this thing in there. And now this thing works like it should. And the new valves that go in these six places should be here tomorrow. The new ones, these are dug out. Oh, the other thing, when, uh, when you look at these videos online, these guys say use a six millimeter screw to get these things out. Six millimeter wouldn't thread into mine. These come apart in three pieces. If I can get one and break it apart. There's a spring, there's a valve, and there's this housing. This piece right here with the O-ring on it, it actually jams down inside the hole. And where that spring goes, I used a 5 16 18 screw. I could get that to thread into it and then pull those things out. Six millimeter, a quarter inch wouldn't work. Just for your grounds. So, maybe if, uh, if you have that problem that I've had and Nobody goes into this on YouTube. Nobody ever discusses if this, this thing right here jamming up. 
will cause you to lose pressure. But uh, I will finish this tomorrow when I get the valves in and put this whole thing back together and take it outside, hook water up to it, and shoot it again and see. Okay, it's next day. The uh, pump is all back together. I took those little caps out that hold the um, three of the valves in and put them in this handy dandy little uh, Harbor Freight ultrasonic parts cleaner and I can't say enough good things about that thing. Of all the crappy tools that Harbor Freight has and some of the stuff that's pretty good they have, this right here, this is my go-to for everything. I clean carburetors, I clean, good grief, it cleans everything. It's just awesome. I've got the uh, pressure washer already out back. I need to go out here and set it all up. There's Darwin. He's my supervisor. Let me set this up here. I've got to go uh, hook up the uh, water hose and uh, pressure wand and all of that. Water and purged air. Success. 